Will I see like visible swelling in my liver area? I, I guess, wait, wait, where's my liver area? First of all, the liver is on the... Oh, I, I, of course, I knew that. Hi everyone! So, some of you may have read, heard or witnessed how viruses and cancers can affect us. So today, we're going to answer some of the most commonly Googled questions on them. For that, I've invited an expert, Dr. Z. Hello everybody. Okay, so let's have a basic question. Uh, what is viral hepatitis B? Well, viral hepatitis B is a liver infection caused by the hepatitis B virus. This in turn leads to liver inflammation and damage. Okay, so like, your, like will, it, will I see like visible swelling in my liver area? I, I guess, wait, where's my liver area? First of all, the liver is on the... Oh, I mean, I, of course, I knew that. I mean, like, the liver area will start swelling. I don't have it, I'm, I'm just fat. It's very different. Yeah. How does viral hep B cause cancer? If a person is infected with the hepatitis B virus, is then unable to clear it, the virus remains in the liver and over the long term leads to damage, in particular cirrhosis, which as I mentioned is scarring of the liver. Mm -hmm. And this in turn is a high risk factor for liver cancer developing. Since we're speaking on liver cancer anyway, here are some other questions that people have asked. Can you explain to me what is liver cancer particularly? Well, first of all, cancer is a condition that arises when the normal cells in our body develop the ability to divide uncontrollably. Wait, when you say divide, it means like it's splitting apart and multiplying. Correct. So in the situation of cancer, the cell division process is out of control and the cell does not know when to stop dividing and even can develop an ability to attack normal, healthy, non-cancerous tissues and even an ability to enter into the blood vessels from which it could spread to faraway organs. With that being said, is it possible to screen for liver cancer? Well, it is. What screening really is, is that we're trying to look for an illness like cancer mm -hmm. in the absence of any symptoms. And this usually takes the form of a blood test for what we call a tumour marker known as alpha fetoprotein or AFP in short and usually combined with a form of scanning often either with an ultrasound or CT of the liver. Mm. And this has actually been shown to help with liver cancer screening and may in fact improve or reduce the likelihood of uh, one dying from liver cancer. I'm so glad that you're around to help with these things because I, I did not understand a word that you said, Doctor. I say this again. <laughs> <laughs> as in, as in, we have experts like you who can guide us through the process of getting it screened and just to find out whether like, yes or no, I have cancer. So, luckily I'm not a doctor. If let's say, you know, someone does have liver cancer, um, how is it treated then? The treatment of liver cancer really depends on various factors, some of which would include the stage of the cancer, meaning how far has the cancer spread or not spread throughout the body, how healthy the overall liver function is, and also how physically fit the patient is. But the main methods of liver cancer treatment would include surgery. This either involves surgery to remove the affected part of the liver or even more extensively to transplant the liver. Other methods of treatment would include what we call ablation therapy, an example of which is radiofrequency ablation, whereby we are able to, through a CT scanner, inject a needle into the area of the liver where the cancer is run some electricity through to heat the tip of the needle and essentially burn the tumour. Oh, like just a straight attack on the tumour? Yes. Another method would be something known as chemoembolization, whereby we are able to thread a plastic tube into a vessel that feeds the liver and the tumour in the liver, inject a chemical substance or chemotherapy to poison the tumour, and then subsequently another agent to block the flow of blood to the cancer thereby depriving it of food and oxygen. There is also another method known as radioembolization, where instead of injecting chemicals, we inject a radioactive substance to the liver where the tumour resides. Then of course, we have medical therapies which include chemotherapy, targeted therapy and also immunotherapy. Can liver cancer be prevented if that's the case? Well, that's a great question and I think the short answer to this question is that yes, it can. People would have heard about alcohol and its damaging effects of, to the liver. Yes, alcohol. I don't drink that. Excellent. Good for you. I try to, I try to. 
Chronic alcohol use and abuse leads also to cirrhosis or scarring of the liver, mm. which is a major risk factor. Another interesting nugget is actually infection by certain moulds. Have you heard of moulds and the... Do you mean the animal or the... the, the M-O-U-L-D-S? Moulds? Yeah. Like the shape stuff? Uh, yes. No. A mold or type of fungus. Oh, mold! Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes, the fungus. I knew that. Bruh. Moldy peanuts, moldy soya beans right. and grains okay. contain a toxin which is known as aflatoxin. And this, this is ingested, can actually poison the liver in a way that causes cirrhosis, therefore increasing the risk of liver cancer developing. So what I'm hearing is don't go to the bars and clubs because that's where alcohol is, that's where peanuts are. And you know, we don't want moldy peanuts. If you're going to be taking peanuts, make sure it's not moldy. Okay, great. Sorry, clubbing. Okay. Well, those are all the uh, questions that have been Googled and frequently asked. Thank you so much for sharing that knowledge. It's nice to know that despite how serious and how overwhelming viruses and cancers can be, that we actually do have the medical expertise to combat and prevent, you know, uh, these things from evolving into an uncontrollable state. So thank you so much, Dr. Z, for sharing your knowledge. And I hope everyone at home learns something about hepatitis B and liver cancer. Look out in the next episode where we address questions on the human papillomavirus and cervical cancer. See you then.